morning, children. Good morning, ma'am. How are you all? Fine, ma'am. Wonderful. So today we are going to start our social science class with the lesson, the motions of the earth. Well, the topic itself says the motions of the earth. What do you understand when we say the motions? The movements, isn't it? The movements of the earth. So do you think earth is stationary or constant or does it move? Yes. Does it move? Yes. Yes. Okay. Can you feel the movement? No. No. We cannot feel the movement. Why? Yes. Because it spins very slowly. Okay. It spins very slowly. You can see that. It spins very slow, so we cannot feel the movement. All right. So have you seen how our Earth looks? Yes. How our Earth looks? A beautiful blue planet. Isn't it? So let's start our lesson and learn few of the wonderful topics about rotation. So what are we going to learn today? We will learn about rotation and revolution. So do you know what is rotation? Yes, wonderful. Okay. So who can tell me what is rotation? Yes. Yes. Spinning of the earth on its own axis is known as rotation. The spinning of the earth on its own axis is called rotation. Can you imagine how the earth spins on its own axis? Sitting here in the universe, is it possible? It's not possible, isn't it? You cannot sit and imagine sitting between the four walls as to how the earth spins, you know, far, far away in the universe there. So let's have a look and understand with the help of Tata Tess. When the solar system is seen from space, we can see the planets moving around the sun. Each planet, including the Earth, also spins around itself like a top. It spins about an imaginary line called the axis which passes through its center from the North Pole to the South Pole. This movement of the Earth around its own axis is called rotation. The Earth completes one rotation in 24 hours which is one day. As the Earth rotates, we observe that the sun rises in the east and sets in the west each day. When you see this, don't you think that the sun moves around the earth? Yes. <laughs> Actually, it is the earth that is spinning on its axis that makes us think this. Due to the earth's rotation, we experience days and nights on earth. So, you know, when we are in uh, LKG and UKG, when we are very, very small, it has been taught that the sun rises in the east and sets in the west. But does the really sun rise? Or is it the earth which revolves around the sun? The earth revolves around the sun, isn't it? Okay, let's learn a little more. If you travel into space and look down at the Earth from the North Pole, you will see that the Earth rotates in the counterclockwise direction. If you view the Earth from the South Pole, the Earth will seem to rotate in the clockwise direction. Inclination. All right. Now let us look at this here. 
Now, earth is a little bit tilted. How is the earth? A little tilted. And this did, what do we call? Axis. It is tilted on its own axis. And at the angle of? 23 and a half degrees is what it is tilted at. So, what if it would be like this? It will be rotating this way. But is it rotating this way? No, no. It is slightly inclined. And what is this inclination called? What is this inclination? It's like that 23 and a half degrees. We know that the Earth's rotation causes days and nights. The border between the bright half of the Earth and the dark half is called the circle of illumination. Due to okay, now we know that rotation has some effects. So who will give me the, the definition of what is rotation? Yes, Anu? It causes day and night. Wonderful. Sit up there. You can sit and answer. Yes, anybody who can tell me what other effects does the rotation has? Other than just causing day and night. Yes, so much. It causes oceanic currents. There is an call in the oceanic currents. Okay? So I have a question for you all. What would happen if the earth stops rotating? Think and answer. What would happen if the earth stops rotating? You just told me that earth was a, the rotation causes day and night, right? There is rise and fall in the oceanic currents. Yes, Swastika? For half of the earth uh, will be uh, at night always, then the other half will be at day. Wonderful. How? Now, since the earth rotates, uh, uh, half of the earth will be at uh, day and the other half will be at night. Which part of the earth will have day? You said half of the earth will be day and half of the earth will be night. Wonderful thing. Correct answer? Yes, yes. And which part uh, faces to the sun uh, will be having day and which part uh, the sun faces to the sun? Sun now will be having day. Very good. Wonderful, children. So, yes, as uh, you know, you all said, the part which is facing the sun will have day and the part which is Away from the sun, we have night. So, that is the reason why I just stopped this video. Now, you can see here, imagine if the earth stops to spin. It will be like this, constant. And the uh, part which is facing the sun will have continuous day. And the part which is away from the sun will have continuous night. What will happen if this actually takes place? If the earth stops, what will be the effects of that? Yes, sir. And why is that? Man, uh, because of the sun, the water will evaporate. And because of the heat, the water will evaporate. And without water, plants cannot grow. And without plants, uh, if plants do not grow, animals and trees die. And because of shock, Very nice, excellent. Yes, excellent. Anybody else? So he, he told that the uh, side which is facing towards the sun, it is going to be very, very hot. The water will evaporate. It will lead to situations like drought. And when there are no crops, there is no food. And the complete food cycle that we have will get disturbed. Okay? And what about the side facing the night? Yes, sir. From the, part, from the side facing the night, among the plants won't grow there. So, among the plants will grow, they will go to synthesis and the water will go to synthesis in the summer. Sunlight. Again, yes, wonderful, wonderful. Correct answer. So the side which is away from the sun will not receive any sunlight and because of that, the photosynthesis process, which is very, very important for plants to grow, will not take place at all. And without plants, there will be no food. Plants will also die and it will eventually lead to the end of everything, all living beings on earth. So is rotation important? Yes, ma'am. Yes? To the inclination of the Earth's axis, days and nights are not of the same length everywhere. Days and nights are equal only at the equator. 
As you go towards the poles in the northern and southern hemispheres, the length of the days and nights become more and more unequal. For example, here at the Tropic of Cancer, the day is longer than the night. On the other hand, at the Tropic of Capricorn, the night is longer than the day. Yes, now we understand by this here that only at equator days and nights are equal. As we go towards the poles, there is a variation in day and night. When we reach, that is when we talk about the Tropic of Cancer, it will have long uh, day and short night. What about the Tropic of Capricorn? Long, long night and short day. There is a variation in the length of day and night. Why? Why is that? Who would want to answer? Yes, Sohan? That because the uh, axis of the Earth is twisted at 23 and a half degrees. Wonderful. Very nice, sir. Because of the tilt of the Earth's axis. Right? Because of the tilt of the Earth's axis, here also you can see the Earth is tilted, and because of this tilt in its axis, the length of day and night is not same. It varies. Great. Let's move ahead and see what we Those are a lot of facts to remember about rotation, right? So, let let's quickly recap what we learned. Let me check what you did, okay? Let's quickly go over what we learned. The movement of the Earth around its own axis is called rotation. The axis is the imaginary line that extends from the North Pole to the South Pole. It is tilted. The Earth takes 24 hours to complete one rotation. We experience days and nights due to rotation. Due to the tilt of the axis, the lengths of days and nights are not equal. Great. So what did we learn today? The movements of the Earth around the Sun is called as rotation. Around the Sun is rotation? The movement of the earth on its own axis is called equation. rotation. Just like this, the earth rotates on its own axis. Right? This is called as rotation. Okay. What is the imaginary line that extends from north pole to south pole? What is it called? Axis. Axis. Great. So, and rotation causes? Day, day, day and night. Day and night. Great. Why is there a variation? In the length of day and night, because of the no, because of the of the the Yes. Okay. Then I have some questions for you. Let me see who can answer. Yes, Trishati. Question. Read the question. The rotation of the Earth is from from east to west, west to east, north east to south west, north west to south east, west to east. Yes, the rotation of the earth is from west, west to east. east. So can you tell me which country is known as the land of rising sun? Land of rising sun, yes, hello? Japan. Japan, great. All smart children. Let's move on to the next question. Read the question carefully. Think and answer. Ah, it seems to be easy for you all. Yes, dear. So, yeah? Um, the earth's axis means earth dash and Option A, 23 and a half degree. Option B, 90 degree. Option C, 0 degree. Option B, 66 and a half degree. And option A. Option A. Okay. Let's check. Let's check. No, it's not 23 and a half. Yes. But it's uh, option D. Option D. 66 and a half degree. Okay. This option D, 66 and a half degree. Great. So Hong Kong lies near the Tropic of Cancer. It experiences the shortest night on. So where is Hong Kong? In China. In China. Okay. So Hong Kong lies near the Tropic of Cancer. It experiences the shortest night on. Think, think. Take your time. Think and answer. 
is not circular but elliptical. That is, it is a slightly stretched circle, somewhat like an oval. So here you can understand that it is not circular, it is elliptical. Yes. Because it is which is why the Earth is sometimes closer to the Sun and sometimes a little further away from it. On January 3rd, the Earth is closest to the Sun at a distance of 147.3 million kilometers. This point in the Earth's orbit is called perihelion. The Earth is furthest from the Sun on July 4th at a distance of 152.1 million kilometers. Here also you can observe, due to this shape, the elliptical shape, the distance is also varying, right? There is a variation in the distance, okay? This point in the Earth's orbit is called aphelion. Earth's revolution around the Sun is largely responsible for conditions on Earth. It is Earth's revolution that causes seasons. Yes. So now we learned that rotation causes day and, day and night. It also causes rise and fall in the ocean currents. So we will learn a little more in detail about what causes seasons. What causes seasons? Revolution. Revolution. Okay. Let's see how. You know that revolution causes seasons. Let's understand how. Uneven duration of day and night and changes in altitude of the sun during the year. Come on, 
in the same part. Now here you can observe the hemisphere that Australia is in and India is in. Okay? And the difference in the seasons. Well, it is winter in Australia at this time, while we have summer in India. The sun's rays fall in a slanting manner on Australia in May. So it is cold there, while the sun's rays fall quite directly over India, making it hotter. You know that the earth revolves around the sun, don't you? You all know it, right? Okay. So know that the earth's axis is tilted at an angle of 23 and a half degrees. So, as the earth moves around the sun, the amount of sunlight and heat that the two hemispheres receive changes during the year. On the 21st of June, the sun's rays fall directly on the Tropic of Cancer. At this time, the North Pole faces the sun. Now here you can see the North Pole is facing the sun. And the rays of the sun are directly falling on the Tropic of Cancer. So those places which fall under this region, the Tropic of Cancer here, will have summer. They receive a lot of heat. Yes. On this day, the Northern Hemisphere experiences the longest day and the shortest night. This position of the Earth, when the Sun is directly overhead at the Tropic of Cancer, is called the Summer Solstice. So what is Summer Solstice? When the Sun is directly overhead the equator, it is called as Solstice, Summer Solstice. At this time, the Northern Hemisphere experiences summer. And it is winter in the Southern Hemisphere because the sun's rays are slanted and spread over a large area here. So when there is summer in the Northern Hemisphere, what season will you have in the Southern Hemisphere? Winter. In the Southern Hemisphere, days are short and nights are long. Oh, so that's why it was cold in Australia and May. So, Ma, when it is winter in India, it must be summer in Australia. E yes or no? Yes, yes Ma. Ma. Correct. Yes. You see, six months later, as the earth revolves around the sun, on the 22nd of December, the sun's rays fall directly on the top of Capricorn. This position of the earth when the sun's rays fall directly on the tropic of Capricorn is called the winter solstice. So what is winter solstice? So the longest night. Yes, and when the sun Okay. Correct. When the sun rays falls directly on the tropic of Capricorn, it is winter solstice. So what is winter solstice? When the sun rays falls directly on the tropic of Capricorn or on December. Due to the tilt of the axis, the southern hemisphere faces the sun, while the northern hemisphere faces away from the sun. But now, what about spring and autumn? Which hemisphere faces the sun at this time? At this time, neither the northern nor the southern hemisphere faces the sun. Notice that the sun's rays fall directly on the equator. Now you can notice here, the rays of the sun are falling directly on the equator, not on the northern or the southern hemisphere. This is when we have equinox, which means equal day and night. So throughout the world we will have equal day and night. Why? Because the rays of the sun fall directly on the equator. The days and nights are equal in all regions of the earth. This is called an equinox. This happens twice a year. On the 21st of March and the 
23rd of September. On the 21st of March, it is spring in the Northern Hemisphere. This is called the Spring Equinox. And so what do we have on March 21st? Spring Equinox. Okay, Spring Equinox. On September 23rd, we will have autumn. autumn. This time, it is autumn in the Southern Hemisphere. On the 23rd of September, another equinox takes place. At this time, it is autumn in the Northern Hemisphere. So it is referred to as the autumn equinox. At this time, it is spring in the Southern Hemisphere. Uh, in that case, next time I go to Australia, I will choose to go when it is autumn in India. That means it will be spring in Australia and I will get to see some beautiful flowers. Okay, so which hemisphere is India in? Which hemisphere is India in? Yes, sir. Northern. Northern, okay. Anybody else? Do you all agree with the answer? Yes, yes. Uh, yes, northeastern hemisphere. Then India is in, India is in Northeastern Hemisphere. Time for the quiz. Before we end our class for today, yes, during the summer solstice, the rays of the sun reach the equator at an angle of. Think and answer. During the summer solstice, the rays of the sun reaches the equator at an angle of. So summer solstice takes place when the rays of the sun are direct on the equator. So what? Will be the angle. A option. Shall we try? No, you should be guess what is your answer. C. Okay. And what about yours? B. Alright. So we will go with A first and then J. Correct.
the definition of rotation and what are its effects. Similarly, you will also write down what is rotation and what are its effects. Okay, what is rotation, what are its effects, what is revolution and what are its effects. So with this I have a, one more last question for you. Which is the longest day in a year? Longest day. Yes. Okay, and which is the longest night? 22nd December. 22nd December. Great. All right, children. So, we end our class today. Thank you and have a good day.